program that goes into detail in techniques, tools or equipment that comes up on the Great British Sewing Bee. And we do that here because we've got more time and also because we have Master Taylor Couturier, Carol Elaine to help us. Hey, Carol. Hi, Stuart. How goes? Going very well. Can you believe that we're halfway through the season already? I know, it's I know. Nice. It's, it's really, really moving on fast, isn't it? Isn't it just? Week five, Children's Week. So we're kind of honing in on a technique that we've slightly talked about in previous episodes, um, but mm -hmm. not really gone into much detail, and that's applique or mm -hmm. applique. Yes, I, I would say applique. But it's, it, it is, every time you sew on a pocket, that's what you're doing, you know? You do any, any embellishing on top of your base fabric, you're appliqueing on, generally, yeah. that's what happens. And I wanted to explore that because one of the techniques that Christian used in the um, Made to Measure Challenge was to uh, applique a pocket on with a contrasting zigzag stitch. And I thought, well, that's interesting. If you used tone on tone thread instead of the contrast, you could use that technique to actually sew a pocket on. So we're gonna look at um, appliqueing a pocket on with a straight stitch and then using a zigzag. And then I thought, well, let's explore lace. So let's explore beaded lace. Oh. And, and then, you, you know, it's surprising how you can make a garment much more interesting using this technique. But it's, it's as you said, we don't talk about it all that much, do we? We don't, um, and I think it sometimes is a technique that is just what people presume, and and I, and I think that's something that we always uh, take pride of in this program is that we never presume that everyone knows, uh, and we always try and talk about the technique and how it's done, um, mm -hmm. uh, and to explain it. So let's go into your first video then that you prepared for us, which is literally the basics of of putting this pocket onto a top of uh, a fabric and apl app or applying it, which <laughs> did you know that's what it, what it is? The, the, the French or the Latin word, applicare. Yes, yes yeah. exactly, that's the root. It but means to apply something. Applying it on. Let's take a look at Carol's first video and we'll see the basics of, uh, of applique. I thought I'd talk a little bit about applique in this tutorial because we saw one of the contestants um, applique a pocket on to um, a sportswear piece and he used a zigzag stitch. Now normally you would sew on a pocket with a straight stitch, but a zigzag can be an embellishment, but it also can be used as an applique. And you can see I've done this side of the pocket using a zigzag stitch. Obviously start with a sampling. I've got onto my domestic machine and I've started with a very wide and a long zigzag stitch and then slowly I refined it down to the width and the length of the stitch that I wanted. This turned out to be not too wide, so I went back to this scale here, which you can see has worked out quite well. It's sturdy, and it gives it a bit of a lacy, decorative effect versus the straight top stitch. The other way you can ap apply a pocket or any other shape uh, using applique is to use lace or trim. So in this case, you might line up the lace, obviously, secure this down first so that it hides under the pocket. And then as long as you line it up on this double edge, see, because you've already got a turned in edge here, the two layers, so that you're sewing on top of the two layers and your stitch doesn't rock down, fall down to the garment fabric itself. Um, or you can use a rickrack. Here I've made my own using some pinking shears and some felt. And again, it's about placement so that you don't, you don't end up sewing on and off what you're appliquing. Okay, so that's just one way of using zigzag stitch to applique a pocket. It's, it's that idea then of, uh, of do you show the stitching off or how much you show the stitching off? Oh, exactly. And if you look at a pair of jeans, say, so you have the back pocket, which has got the double top stitching, and sometimes another design going across the hem of the pocket, you know? And it's those details that really catch the eye. Um, it makes the garment a bit more sturdy. Um, people notice it and then it, you know, it's, it becomes a branding tool, doesn't it? Mm. Yeah, very much so. Yeah. 
Um, and where have you gone on from that? Because you were talking about using other materials, other fabric, is that right? So you could use, say, I was out shopping the other day at the new King's Cross um, oh. area. It's amazing what's going on there. And I oh, got- what, regeneration? Yes, exactly. Oh. They've got, there's a, a Coles Drop yard, which is really interesting. It's been designed by the Heatherwick Studios. It's really worth a visit because it's just behind the station and you can walk around. It's on the, uh, it's right up against uh, Central St. Martin's. Oh, so yes. there's so much to see. Place to and be. the shops are amazing. I mean, they're, they're independent shops, things that you don't see normally on the high street. But I caught sight of Rick Rack and I thought, well, Rick Rack is back. It's you know, you think of it as an old fashioned way of you trimming something. Indeed. And that, so that's why we, we talked about maybe using a rickrack trim or another trim to secure a pocket or to, to ah. secure another shape on. Or you could, you know, yes. applique a yoke on, you know. Yep. Um, so that's why we, we talked about that. And then, of course, one of the greatest, um, more beautiful embellishments are the variety of laces that you can get so then we're going to go on we're going to talk about lace and how to work with that and then we're going to end up merging this idea of using lace mitering lace and then segueing into that very complicated oh. sailor's collar oh. <laughs> well well let's not jump too fast then let's go to <laughs> you showing us and explaining us uh, uh, of, uh, of applique with the lace then let's take a look Applique can be used when using a variety of textures as well. And you can use some of the textures and some of the makeup of your applique to help out um, anchor it to your fabric. So here I have a base cloth of raw silk, which is heavy texture and a very loose weave. And I'm going to applique this beaded lace on top. And I'm going to use the beads to do that. So you have to choose a beading needle, obviously, that will fit through your bead. And then you can simply stitch through and secure the beads as you go. It's a very sturdy way of anchoring lace onto your base fabric. And it gives you a very sturdy finish as well instead of couching the stitches on to, say, some of the cord or some of the tool or the lace. So this is another way that you can use applique to a very neat effect. So just make sure you choose the right needle and a good cotton-covered polyester thread is very good as well. And there you are, you have a nice sturdy finish there, using the beads to help you applique onto your base cloth. Oh, I'm so enjoying being back on the side of asking the questions. <laughs> <laughs> last, week, last week was fun and we've had some lovely comments about it, um, but I, I'm like, I prefer being back on this side. <laughs> well, well, all right, we want you comfortable. <laughs> <laughs> now, we're going to move on to the mitre, which we did talk about in last week's episode, because mm -hmm. the mitered corner for me in patchwork is done all the time it's like it's like your bread and butter uh, so it's it's something that you just you do without really thinking but it obviously appeared again in this episode with the sailor suit didn't it this is a very tricky ask especially with the kind of braid that some people chose i don't know i noticed that some of the braid was more substantial it had a, a heavier weave to it maybe even a pattern in it then I saw some just plain braids that looked like they were starting to split in places. Oh, Maybe lovely. it was sewn over, taken out, the stitches were taken out, it left a mark. Uh. So it's tried to give another pass over it, it started to fray and split. And that's the danger. It's really hard to get it parallel. Um, and it's very difficult to mitre something which is so thin. It, I don't know what width it was, but it looked like it was maybe eight, eight, nine mil. 
okay. a big quarter of an inch. That's really tricky, especially when you have a big plastic presser foot that magnifies the trim underneath it. Yeah. And you can't, even if you lift the presser foot, you don't, there's not enough room there. If you've got that tiny width of, of trim and you're trying to bend it round, and some people, as we saw, didn't do a, a full miter. Mm. They just they just turned it at a right angle, and then you ended up with a three-faceted yeah. three uh -huh. um, mm. turn. Um, the people that had the time to, to do a second, um, you know, to, to secure it on the top and the bottom of the trim, you know, that looked a little bit better than just the single pass. But it's tricky. It's mm. tricky, and it's, it's fiddly enough but then like with all children's wear, you're working in smaller spaces. Oh. It takes you less time. And I think it's there's great satisfaction in sewing for kids because things happen quickly. You, mm. the, the garments get built very fast. Oh, it's the same in my shop. The ladies are always knitting little cardigans for, for, for babies. And you get such satisfaction because they knit up so quick. <laughs> and then it. you finish That's one it. and then you want to knit another, which is great yeah. to solve that as well, isn't it? Yeah, but absolutely. But it is maneuvering the trickier spaces, you know, the tiny sleeve, you know, the arm size and, and getting the sleeves in. Um, but they did, they did very well, don't you think? Oh, absolutely. We'll, we'll, Four we'll and get, a half hours or something I know. Like that. Yeah. Um, do, do you think, uh, we've talked about the, the, these tools before, like um, tweezers or the tailors all, do you think that that's where these tools would come in really handy when doing this type of work? Yes, absolutely. Tweezers, fantastic, or a, very, a long pin. Yeah. You know, the longer, longer pins or an awl would come in handy. Yes, absolutely. It's so tricky, as you will see um, in, in, in the next video, I think, that you're just working with this tiny square. The thinner the trim, the smaller the square is that you're trying to yeah measure across yeah. Well, it was still, a big ask yeah i mean i've still got the the the, the mitre he, here from uh from the yes. patchwork and yes but, but this this was you know this is a, um what well, was two and a half inches so what's that now in half again but that that that's still enough there but yeah. even yeah. when i fold it over and then you have to do that and that's yes. still that's still fiddly enough as it is but you're, you're yes, talking yes. about half the size of that what you're doing half the size of that. What and you don't, yes you're absolutely right and you don't have anything underneath to help form that corner no so you've got your batting and your two layers yeah of fabric so you've got something you've got you've already got a template to fold over yeah you've got nothing with this trim well <laughs> Let's take a look. Carol's done a really detailed video here, basically explaining the mitre principle. So it's, it, it will help you no end. Uh, so take a look and uh, we'll come back out of that and talk more about then how the sewers have done it on the sailored back bit. Take a look. Now staying with our lace, I want to show you a quick trick that will help you mitre a piece of lace that may come in handy for one of your applique projects. So I have a piece of lace here that I've measured. It's three quarters of an inch wide. And I've set up a simple template here, marking three quarters of an inch on either side of this right angle corner. And a very simple way to set up a mitre is to lay this lace, same width as your template, along and then turn it back at the edge where you have this square and then turn it back again along the corner so that it then follows along. So this is the basis of your mitre and it just helps to visualize this. That's what you're doing. You're just using the square at the point you want to mitre. Now let's give that a little press. This is such a handy trick to use, and if you have the time, obviously some of our sewers didn't have that kind of time to set this all up, but if you practice with this method, then when it comes to something like a competition or somewhere where you're short of time, then you've got an advantage 
and you can see ahead what it is that you're doing. Now, pretend that seam has been sewn, and I'm just going to press that open so that you don't have a seam showing one way or the other. It's split right down the middle, and then even though, oh darn, I've got a leak. And then even though it's not sewn, you can see how clean that mitre is going to be. And obviously it's a bit fiddly with lace because sometimes it has a mind of its own, but you can soon coax it into position. There you are. Look, so you've gone all serious now. You've got your specs on. <laughs> <laughs> I, know, I know what we're going to talk about now. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I so, need my notes. The, we've got the, the, the mitered technique there. And then for the pattern challenge, which we might as well sort of merge the two, they've got mm -hmm. to make this sailor, dear little sailor outfit. And yes, that classic bit over the back with the, mm -hmm. the straight down mitre across horizontal, vertical, and up again. Wow, that's fiddly, isn't it? It's very fiddly. I enjoyed the history lesson as well. Wasn't you know, it? how this evolved and then how it turned in, it was copied into the, the children's wear. Yeah. Um, it's a smart little outfit, isn't it? Isn't it? And they, yes, and I know in the utility era, they did, they, they, the make, do, and mend and the utility clothing in the 40s and the 50s, they made women's dresses with sailor collars on those. I admired those, you know, in the, Patterns first came out when I was a kid. But yes, this is difficult. Uh, this, con this was about contrast and accuracy. Yeah. It was about the choice of cloth. So if you've got your contrast trim and your tie to work against the top and the shorts, right. you were home free. Yeah. That's what this was about, you know? And some got it and some, as we saw, did, didn't. Yeah. But um, it was nice to see that Marnie chose two different colors of trim for the sleeve and the collar. Um, and it was interesting. You could tell people that have chosen really busy cloths that you weren't quite sure how yeah. this was all going to end up. Yeah. Yeah, there were a couple. I think um, Christian at first, I thought, oh, well, there's a lot going on there. Um, but when we looked at Marnie's from a distance, it was busy. It all kind of blurred in, didn't it? The same top yeah. with the same bottom. That's right. And the tie matched. So it, it yeah. ended up looking like, like, a, you know, like not like a sailor's outfit. Yeah. 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 It's that, kind that's... of overwhelmed the eyes. Yes. And so you say that you, it takes looking ahead. You have to visualize what this is going to look like before you yeah. choose your fabric. And that is a skill in itself that will give you extra points or you will lose points. Indeed, it's also, it must be tough on the sewers because I'm just trying to think of my position there, if I was on it. Do you play safe and go, this is a classic outfit. It's gotta be blue and white, contrast. Yes. But then, but then do, you, do you then worry about people going, oh God, they're just being predictive and traditional all the time. So do you then become the sewer that goes, do you know what? I'm going to be brave. I'm going to choose different colours. A bit like Jill, really, going for that sort of, was it sort of teal and yellow? But, teal but and yellow. You risk you, yeah. as you say, you then risk that not working because you haven't fully planned it or realised whether how those fabrics will work. Exactly. And, but the thing was, is you, you had to see the trim on the collar and you had to see the trim on the, on the sleeve. And that had to work against each other in a way it had to be a sharp contrast or it wasn't going to work yeah and i like when i saw jill sewing hers i thought that's interesting she's she's take you know it's it's a take on that contrast you know that marine to sort of navy and white she's just chose two different colors yeah. you know but it's on that same line the prints made me a little nervous yeah the flowers and and i liked the, our winner who uh man Yi with her sailor's themed cloth but then the contrast on the sleeve wasn't that effective, was it? No, no. But she could have chosen a navy trim. Like yes, yeah. Marnie did, yeah. and then it would have. She, I don't think she would have lost any points. 
if she the, would have done that. The print worked though with Ma, with uh, uh, Manise because that anchor print was yeah. very pale, wasn't it? Yes. It was kind of yeah. very pale blue on white. So you still had that classic white and blue look, but with just when you got closer, you could then see and enjoy the anchor. So that was just clever, wasn't it? Clever. It, print. I think so too. I think so, and, and deserving of the of the you know the highest score. Yes. Um, let's go back then to, to your, your last video where you wonderfully explain the doing the mitre on, on those lines, or well, we watch it. Um, mm -hmm. But you've got the beauty of having time with you. Just imagine exactly. doing, <laughs> doing that. Absolutely. And this is why I wanted to spend the amount of time using a template just so you can understand just what the heck you're doing. Yeah. When you might or something, what's happening? And so we saw it with the lace, explain, and I don't spend a huge amount of time saying, oh, now here's the sailor collar, because I want people to, to really link into that and be able to visualize what's going on. And then you can apply that to any. Yes. Yeah. So so now when we watch your the, the sailor video that you do is much shorter because we've already seen the one previously that was explaining everything. So hopefully now, yes. viewers, when you watch this, you'll be going, ah, oh, yes. And you'll be able to apply it. Well, hopefully. <laughs> and this is and you'll see that we're using the same width of braid that the contestants had to Ooh. use. So Ooh. we're seeing it in that small scale oh. and, and just one a few tricks on how to make it easier. Oh, fabulous. Right. Enjoy, everyone. So now we have our sailor collar and we've marked our double layer of parallel trim. And we're going to use that same technique where you lay your trim along, set up one of your corners first and make sure that you have enough trim to go all the way through the parallel edges of your collar. So you've laid the trim out, you turn it back where your corner meets here. You can set up a pin at a 45 degree angle just to stabilize your trim. And then you just simply turn it back at the 90 degree angle. So there you are, you're all set. You can do one of these corners, as I said, and get yourself through to half this, to half this project and then come back and, and do that one. Or simply start and work your way from this corner to this corner. But I want to show you this way uh, because now we're going to sew it and I'm going to just say one final thing about this. I'm going to start with a stitch at about three on my industrial here. And as I get near the corner, I'm going to shorten the stitch just a little bit because we want the stitch to land absolutely on the corner. So I'm just going to dial a lower stitch now. And as I get to the corner, I've got a little bit more room to maneuver. And now I'm just going to walk the stitch right into the corner. Now I'm still on the small stitch. And I'm going to start sewing again. Just give myself a couple of stitches and then go back to the longer stitch keeping this firmly on the guideline that I've set up, making sure it's parallel. Don't pull the trim, don't ease it in, just work flat. Okay, now there you can see, we've got a nice corner and I'm using a contrast thread. So it's gonna look a lot better if I match the thread tone on tone. And then simply do the same thing on this pass. Start with a slightly longer stitch. As you get closer to that corner, Shorten your stitch slightly so you have a better chance of getting right in that corner. Proceed on with a few short stitches and then lengthen them a little bit. Not too much far apart, but just give yourself a smaller stitch so that you've got a better chance of meeting that corner. And there it is, your mitered ribbon on a sailor's collar. Right, wonderful. So I can see there the all important thing then is that pin, that 45 degrees. That's it. And you can, it, you can visualize this ahead of time, which is what you need to do when you're in a rush, in a competition like this, or you're in a time crunch. You, you, if you just think ahead of what's going on and where your corner is, and you set yourself up at that corner and the whole thing just falls into place. Yeah. 
you've got a right angle, you've got a 45 degree angle, that's how you miter, it's yes. simple. And I think the beauty of this chat that we have, because I know a lot of people want technical language and they want to know how the exact, yeah. well, not the exact method, because you, you can do whatever you want here once you understand the principle of what you're doing. But the fact that they can rewind and watch this again and again and again until it begins to make sense, you know, like algebra. Oh, <laughs> just, don't, just please. <laughs> no, no, that <laughs> you could say it again and again and again, <laughs> and that wouldn't sit in my head. X. Okay, bad, bad metaphor. <laughs> um, uh, in an ideal world, the sewing bee would be an hour and a half, and 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 whilst they're sewing their mitered corners, they would cut away to me and you, where yes. we teach mitered corners and and yes. speak more and show more in a 10, 15 minutes, like their history bit. Yes. Would it be nice to then have a technical bit? I think so. I, I would like that because I know there's a lot of questions from the viewers and I think that we take this for granted that, oh, this is all very hard and it's going to look like this. Yeah. You know, th these are the results. You can't expect more. But um, and in this challenge, there were very few that really got the mitre perfectly. So in this case, yeah, it would be really nice to. I think as well for the viewer, if we've then just watched this lovely technical bit whilst obviously pretending they're still sewing. When it comes to then judging, we can then go, oh, oh God, that, oh, they did struggle. Oh God, yes, they didn't do it. And, and the, the viewer can connect more, can't they? Because they've seen the technique, how it should be done or how it should look. And then, and when they're watching it and the judging, it's just, it's like a full circle then, isn't it? Well, it is, and there's a, an appreciation then. That's with the, the viewing audience, they appreciate the, the yeah. hassle, the big ask, the technical challenge that these people are yeah. under. And then also they can gauge the results against maybe a better example. And it's better because we have the time. Yeah. <laughs> and so then, and then we can all join in with this kind of a point score. Yes. And, and then understand why something is at this particular moment in time better than something else but they don't do it and we do so we get and the we pleasure of, we get the pleasure of talking to each other and obviously we've got a bit more time so we can then discuss that between me and you we can show videos and then I, we can ask questions and then we get the questions in the comments so i'm actually yes. quite glad they don't do it because we get to do it don't we, <laughs> we get to do it. and we get to see your lovely example of your quilt and your miter and all that so ah, you know, so yes well and and look at 3d look at my curves Oh, bravo. That's but, uh, amazing. But as I say, my, 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 I, wouldn't, I wouldn't normally do binding where you sew it down from the front, part, partly because it's so difficult. But um, yeah, yeah. I'm, a, I'm a, my quilted jacket. I will make that quilted jacket at some point. I will. Go what? for it. Go I've for it. I've still got the, uh, the wrap dress to do, but we'll, <laughs> that will be done by series 10. I... Oh, you're a proper, now you're a proper sewist because uh, you're going to have a rail of unfinished product projects just like the rest of us. Oh, I can't wait. Can't wait. I did some <laughs> more of it, by the way, this week. I did, I um, overlocked all my seams. So, okay. so I, I, I have done a little bit more. Um, uh, so uh, I'll carry on, hopefully, probably after the Jubilee. But anyway, we digress. Let's just talk then. I hope that helped everyone. As always, leave your comments in 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 uh, in the in the comment section below. If you've got any questions, please we will do our we will do our best, won't we, Carol? We, we're all busy people. We're working and you're working with couture work. It's it's mm -hmm. hard sometimes to get to the computer, but we do our very best. Mm -hmm. So the pattern challenge. Then we talked about that. Manny did win. She was the top end of that, closely followed by Christian and then Marnie. Um, and then at the other end, we had Angel, uh, Angel, <laughs> <laughs> Angela, six, Jill, seventh, and Annie, eighth. And um, mostly because of the, uh, the mighty corner issues and fabric issues, wasn't it? Yes, yes. Fabric choice was not, not good. Um, I think I heard the word uh, bouncy fabric. I, I think a better word would be fluid you know, fluid or listless, because it didn't hold a crease. Yeah. Um, so that, that was the problem with that. Um, uh, even if she would have tacked the, the, the turnips 
up, it's still, it's going to fall away because the fabric is too flowy. It's yeah. too liquid. So that was the problem there. Well, and I think Annie must have had some problem with elastic because yeah. <laughs> naughtily they fell down. I think they must have tugged at that. <laughs> I think she did. I think um, normally you take at least an inch off for children's wear, maybe even more for an adult. So you, your elastic should be about two inches shy of the size of the casing. That's, that's a good rule. There we are. Brilliant mm -hmm. little tip. Um, but I thought that was a delightful little challenge. Did you not? I, I love, this is one of my favorite episodes, to be honest. I oh. think, as, as you said, it's great satisfaction with children's wear because you build these lovely things um, quickly. They're a little bit fiddly, but I thought it was just nice to see the, a reprise of the sailor suit. Yeah, very much so. Well, let's move on to the transformation challenge then uh, and the made to measure, and we'll just give our opinions on what the sewers made and, and try and, and, and um, celebrate what they created because they do, as we know, work so hard and under so much pressure. So they have 90 minutes then for the transformation challenge to turn school uniform, which we know and love, into a cool outfit. <laughs> Well, I like I, I like this one very much. Yeah, there's great scope, wasn't there? There was a, a huge variety of offerings there. It was, um, but you were you were really good, and you, I think you sent waves of, of, of te telep telep telepathic <laughs> waves. I think is what they call yes, it. Yes. Because you went, oh, I'll I'll make a hoodie, and then yes. look what Marnie <laughs> goes and makes, and look what Christian again makes. Good yeah, call. I mean, you got the opportunity to use different colors and contrasting fabrics. So I love the lined hood, you know, of, yeah. of Christians. And um, I think it's cool. And I think a lot of, a lot of six-year-olds would reach for that. And they would want Absolutely. to have that on. So those, that really fulfilled the brief. I also like brogans because for a little girl, they do like to dress up and they like sparkly things. Yes, um, that clever little. Yeah, yeah I, th I thought it was very clever the over-the-shoulder straps that did take on that ripple from the sequin trim. No, I, I thought that, that was very good, that one. Um, it, as it's, we've always talked about this, Ryan, it's very hard. And, and you've got that brief there of, right, you've got to make it into something cool. So, so I think some of them struggled with, well, is that actually cool? So like Deborah yeah. was going for that, it came across like a play suit, but Pat still, yeah. Patrick said it was still more like a uniform still. It looked like an ensemble, didn't it? it and it was sober. It, was, it kind of lacked the cool factor. I, I agreed with that. Yeah. And I think the same with Jill's, that sort of grey and maroon sleeveless vest top and, and sort of jobber trousers. Yeah. I like the idea of overlocking something on the outside with a contrast. I thought that was really clever. And maybe if the top was slightly different, that could have been a fun tracksuit. Mm. Um, but the neck went, went, went a bit wrong. It was oversized for, for the model, wasn't it? Yes, yeah. Mm. But without a doubt, let's say what, what we saw from, from Christian and Marnie, I thought w w did work well for being cool. But the, the final standings we had, Angela at the top, which was that sort of yes. gingham stroke black yeah. dress with a bow. Yes, very effective, but maybe I do. It, it just really didn't strike me, but, um, mm. and I, I thought it looked like, uh, yes, that the, the pockets weren't integrated. You know, the bow wasn't integrated. Yes, they the bow felt a bit bolted on. Kind of. Yes, yeah. I agree. I did like the contrast on the cuffs of the trousers. That worked really well. But it, it looked unfinished to me. But it, it was interesting seeing that at the top. Christian second. The second time Christian has come second again. He is, mm -hmm. the, well, I think we said episode two, I mm, think he might be one to watch out for. Yes. He's yes. really developing and really showing. Well, it, he, was, yeah. he was developing well at the beginning, but he's showing great skill. He is indeed, and imagination. Indeed. And yes. this is, yes, it's going to be into, well, we're, we're entering a really interesting time now, aren't we? We talk about this, talked about it last year, where you kind of reach the halfway point and suddenly you've got more time with people. Yeah. And you're noticing more. So. Indeed, mm -hmm. indeed. 
um, that yes, I think Christian got overlooked very uh, in, in episodes one, two and three in the edit because there were obviously so many, yes, but yes. you can see glimmers of him thinking, right, he might last quite a long way. We then have Man Yi with her dungarees in third place. They were cute. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> what was, and, and yes, the A for Annie. And um, that got twisted up a little bit. Yeah. But really sweet garment. And I think, you know, even though it was, yeah, it was completely transformed, wasn't it? Mm. Because she turned that contrast, that real heavy woolen look with the white blouse, turned it into something very summery. Mm. Um, and the other end, we've got Annie Six, again, at the bottom end, Deborah Seventh, and then Jill Eighth. Um, seeing someone who has been winning and coming top now, two rounds on a trot in, in the bottom. So for Jill fans, people are going, oh, no, aren't they? Yes, I know, because I loved her transformation with the duvet. That was so beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. And that, I suppose that's, that's the way the show goes. They're Indeed. all very good sewists, but you just... Yeah. You just create something and it doesn't work, or you just have brain freeze or something. It exactly. You've got to and say then, goodbye and, to someone. Yes, you do. And and in the final challenge, we've got a real heartbreak we're headed for here. I know, I know. Well, let's move on to that then. So the made to measure to a, a delightful idea of making a Halloween outfit, um, but this idea of having a three D element, which is it a scary thing to make because it means you've got to have something sticking out or or added on you need some sort of architecture there don't you you do you, you have to engineer something and obviously it's going to take more than cloth right so <laughs> then we saw you know pool tubing and wire and foam and all sorts of things um hula hoops um this was really exciting i i, I really enjoyed watching them being made um hearing the stories behind why yeah. they were making this particular this particular costume and then the results. Uh, and I love the, the, the catwalk for this one. Wasn't it just? Oh, yeah. Yes. Uh, well, I'll talk, I'm going to start with my favourite, which just, which just stood out, which I thought was Annie's dragon. The fabric yes. there. Yeah, that works so well. But the fabric was, was an obvious choice. And mm. then once, once she had that fabric, and those eyes, then it was just, I thought, home free. And it seemed to cut really easily and sew really easily. So, um, but the, I don't know how she did that nostril thing. I, <laughs> how did that happen? But, um, but you really said it's the engineer. Yeah. Some, yes. some of these sewists clearly have that engineer in them. And mm. well, let's talk about Marnie and, and, and her dark fairy, maybe not so. Maybe she hasn't done anything like that. It's different, is it a different part of the brain that has to work these things out? Yes. And, and when she said, oh, I've got this pool tubing, and you saw it coiled, you know, fluidly around, you yeah. know, and I thought how, you know, I could just picture this floppy Flopping. material and how, how is that going to work? And, and even when she added the originally the boning on, it, the shape of the skirt, it didn't have enough girth. Yeah, there wasn't enough fabric, so even yeah. when she, she added that in, it just flopped on the ground and it did. So there's something wrong with the cut of that skirt and then the materials chosen. And then also there was no engineering or architectural element to support the wings. Yeah, whereas Brogan had that fabulous idea of the umbrella for the wings. Yes, I thought that was very clever and I loved her layering of the velvet and the trim mm. and, the, and the sparkly organza fabric. I thought, I really thought that maybe deserved more points than, than that that got. Agree. Um, we were talking about it with um, Ting and Anya on Unpicked and said similar there. It, um, they, they, they kind of picked at the ears being a bit too small. And it's like, oh, it's a bat. Yes. A bat. Bats aren't going to have big, like, <laughs> like that. Yeah, they're not either. prominent. They're not prominent ears. Mm. And you have to lend something to the imagination. I, I think the idea to get a black umbrella, to cut it apart, Absolutely. and to use that as wings was, you know, took to a lot of ingenuity. And again, who cares if it doesn't look exactly like an anatomical drawing of a bat? <laughs> I know. But what? We got yeah. the idea. Yeah. <laughs> that criticism was a bit harsh, yeah. I thought. However, the criticism about the two spiders, I thought, were quite fair. What do you think was missing 
Because I would have thought that would have been the first thing that you thought about, which was having some fishing wire thread to link yes. that arm to these fake arms. Yes. What, the, what the happened whole, there, do you think? The whole spider was, these were the first two legs of the yes. spider. These were the first two. The legs were the number seven and eight. But the four in the middle were dependent on the movement of the arms. Yeah. So, because the web wasn't connected to the legs, so that meant that the arm had to be collect connected to the next leg, yeah. to the next leg, yeah. and they had to move as one. Yes. Yeah. So, that's basic engineering, isn't it? It is. But I would have thought that would have been the first thing you do with the spider. Yeah. So I, I was a little yeah. bit lost with how, whether, whether it was a time thing, whether it was a material thing, or what, but, you yes. know. Who knows? Who knows? And I think then there was a sizing issue as well because the inner legs were smaller and they didn't look like they were, you know, part of, you know, when you look at a spider and you see a circle, um, yes. the yeah. inner legs were not long enough. Ah, to... right. There you go. Um, well, then it leads us to the last two, uh, really, which was the Dalek and Miss Havisham. So, uh, Dalek of uh, Jill and Miss Havisham of Deborah. Again, those those <laughs> two those two gals they thought thoroughly about sculpture, yeah, and how to make things work. I don't know what the Gaelic is. <laughs> I, oh, I, it's watched, a... I watched these shows, so I I thought I gotta I gotta get with the drill here. <laughs> <laughs> well, I better look into this. Snap! I didn't I didn't know. I have to say, hold my hand up. I was like, who's Miss Havisham? I, I clearly oh. read I clearly read the Beano and the Dandy too much. <laughs> and not Dickens. No. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that was so clever and, and really spooky and eerie and, and you know, the whole bit. And the story was all there when yeah. she said she wanders the halls of these great, you know, these great old homes looking for Mr. Wright. <laughs> but clearly <laughs> kind of scratch his eyes out. Um, but wasn't that wonderful, as you say, um, that term engineering to, to get yeah. that and design that. Yes. Yeah, because aside from that, it was it was a dress. It yeah. was a really pretty little dress which she then stressed in a real theatrical way. Yeah. And, and it just it, it you ended up with so much drama. Yes, and um, and actually that was one thing that Esme said that she wanted was I uh, want to be surprised or the unexpected, and that is the drama, isn't it? Absolutely, yeah. So total success that did be just beautifully done. And but we've so was Jill's. Well, yes, mm -hmm. to to make that that shape of the Dalek, and then having the head, and then the thing that came out to it, you know, to. To, uh, to 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 view its viewing eye, it's yeah. phenomenal, wasn't it? Exactly. And all those, and then, I don't forget all those appliques. Uh, yes, and so what she did, she stuck them on, didn't she? Mm. So that was great. That was a, a wonderful visual effect that could have taken ages yeah. if she didn't have that shortcut. Yeah. So that was really well executed. And then there was a long tube attached to a headband. Yeah. And that sat perfectly, didn't it? So again, she achieve some however the balance to hold that in place yeah um it's good it, job jill indeed and well a garment of the week went to deborah a, a second garment of the week because she had it the week before didn't she with the um uh let, let me look through my notes with what was it in the um, with the boats on it, wasn't it? Was it? Oh yes, that's right. So they, yes, the Air France costume. <laughs> that's it. <yes. laughs> Sorry, Deborah. So no, now, that, uh, now we know which one it is. Yeah. So she's she's um, doing well with the made to measure, which is you know the last thing we see, and it seems yeah. to carry the most weight, doesn't it? Yeah. Yes, and I can see now why. Sadly, we had to say goodbye to Marnie because if you look at round one and round two, Jill um, and Annie yeah. were seventh and eighth. Then uh, Jill and Deborah were seventh and eighth. Um, and Marnie was third in the first round. Marnie yes. was um, then uh, fifth in the second yeah. round. But yeah. because Angela had won the transformation challenge, Mm -hmm. It was kind of the right decision, really. Um, yes, I so, think so. So it, it shows that they they took the idea right. Well, Angela did come first, even though she was six um, uh, on the first round. 
that actually you do need a that waiting for then the the May to measure for Marnie just wasn't there, was it? No, and I think at, when I when we saw what was about to happen, I thought yes, there is an overall uh, hierarchy to who is yes. more solid in the process than Marnie. Mm -hmm. It I was gutted because she is the one that, that's the kind of personality that is so joyful to have in a workshop. Yeah. She was engaging, she was witty. Uh, I loved her sense of humor. She seemed made for it um, in the beginning, but uh, so I, it, it, I, I was very, very sad to see her go. Well, she, she wowed us right from episode one, I think, with the, with the jackets, um, then the sports jackets, when she did the, all those little pockets and, and yes. hidden gems with that jacket. She made some phenomenal, I think she had Garment of the Week. Oh, I'll have to look, I'll, I'll, I'll look back, but she, yeah. Well, that, was the, that was one Garment of the Week, that jacket with that lovely contrast. And it was, the, wasn't it? And the, the big placket in the, in, in the inside. Sports Week, I think that was, wasn't yeah. it? Yes. Um, yes, Garment of the Week, Marnie. But um, I think I could have easily placed a bet on her on episode one going, she'll be, sure. in, the final. She'll be in the final three. <laughs> have you got any I, I, you know, ideas of who's sort of leading the pack at this point? I, 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 I still think Christian is going to be up there. If exactly. I'm going to call it, I think it would be, Chris, it's going to be a close one. I think ooh, I'm going to call it Christian. Manny, yep. Jill and Deborah, Deborah okay. or, or Brogan. Yeah, oh. I, yeah, I yeah. think so. Um, Brogan Difficult. seems to be slipping a little bit in the judging, but I think she's still sewing beautifully. Absolutely, and, yes. And I think she's, the thing I like about Brogan and Christian is they take risks. Yes. And I'm hoping that that element of their, you know, of their execution is, is, is going to come in. I love the clown. I mean, that was a risk. Yeah. Because it wasn't, it wasn't really scary. Well, that's right. I thought, no. hang on, this is not really halloween -y, but it is halloween -y in adult world Halloween, yes. isn't it? Yeah. Yes, absolutely. Mm. Uh, and it did get a reaction. It, 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 it you know, mm. there was theater, there was drama in that because it was so complete from head to toe. Yeah. It's color. And it, you know, in the pizzazz and the mix of cloths, and it, it, you wanted to look at everything. Uh, but he's been outfit. consistently there. You know, the the yes. um the Hawaiian shirt that he did oh, um yes. on no when it was the the two piece um uh, uh, the combo. He's he's kind of been there, but not in the huge limelight like some of them have had. Yeah, not the wowie. The wow factor. So um. So it's going to be interesting to see what those the, what the final three or four are. Um, and, and it's going to be, it, these next four shows in particular are going to be like nail biting because they are, all, the standards are so high. They are. They are. High. Yeah. And um, I'm really excited to see what the challenges are because we're not really, we're seeing new challenges with this series. Yes. Things I, things I haven't seen before. So yeah. who knows what else they, the producers have up their sleeve on this and, one. And I think that is, is credit to them as well. I think there has there seems to be different differences in the in the challenges they've up their 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 strategy I think on choosing the the patterns the the, the rounds and the transformation challenges and dare I say the judging we haven't yes, we, yes. we haven't been moaning about the judging much have we <laughs> no not a lot <laughs> but as as you pointed out we're about the technique Indeed. we're about Absolutely. helping anybody who who wants to ask a question or who wants to know how they can improve and we can help them to then make that technique their own. Yeah. And, and you can do that by joining in with us in the comments below. Uh, as I say, we will get in touch. Um, and if there's anything that you do want to know, also put that in the comments, because you never know, we might be able to tie that into future episodes. I could do a tutorial or Carol could do a tutorial, obviously, depending on what, what the topics are. But I hope you enjoyed it. Carol, it's been a wonder again, really good. Applique or applique. I think it's a, a US English, uh, British so. English thing. It's uh, a tomato tomato. <laughs> indeed. <laughs> or the Italian Latin applicare to apply. 
we're all going to go off now applying things, aren't we? And playing we around with are. zigzags or stitches <laughs> and brick wrap. Love it, everyone. Thanks very much, and we will see you next week. Cheers. Bye, bye. bye. bye everyone. Bye, Stuart.